Hi everyone, I'm Matt. I'm down at the boatyard and today I'm going to be removing the rusty keel band from the underside of my Orkney Strike Liner. I'm removing the keel band because it was made of mild steel and over the years has rusted to the point that I'm not sure if it is still watertight. The screws holding the keel band in place are in very tightly so as well as a normal screwdriver, I'm using a spanner as a lever on a short screwdriver. Some of the crosshead screws rounded off when I tried to undo them. So for these ones, I had to cut a slot with an angle grinder and then use a flathead screwdriver. I removed 13 screws altogether. The keel band, which had also been stuck down with Sikaflex, was easy enough to pry away from the keel once the screws had been removed. I used the angle grinder to cut the keel band into shorter sections to make it easier to remove from between the boat and the trailer. To create a gap between the keel roller and the keel, I used the winch to bring the boat as far up and forward as possible. This gave me about a centimetre gap between the top of the keel roller and the bottom of the keel. I was then able to manoeuvre the keel band away from the boat and trailer. There's another keel roller at the front of the trailer, but I was able to unbolt this and move this out of the way. The boat is still supported on all the other rollers. I laid out all the pieces of the keel band so that I could measure the total length and I measured it to be 4 metres long. The width is 30mm and the thickness is 3mm. The Seeker Flex was still attached to the keel so this would need to be scraped off. I used my multi-tool with the scraper attachment I started at the bow and worked my way along all the way to the stern. I raised the trailer onto car ramps to make life easier. And finally, with the sanding attachment on my multi-tool and a 240 grade sandpaper, I sanded down the keel to remove the last remnants of the Seeker Flex. The surface would then be ready to apply epoxy to fill the holes. Below the waterline, the boat had been painted in a white gloss paint. I'm going to remove this to check if there's anything hiding beneath it and to restore the hole to the original gel coat finish. To remove the white gloss paint from the underside of the hole, I used the paint stripper, which I applied with a paintbrush. Here I'm applying paint stripper for the third time on the same spot so there's not much gloss paint left to remove. Here you can see the results of applying the paint stripping solution. On the right is the white gloss paint and on the left is after one application of paint stripper. I found that using a scraper to scrape off the dissolved paint was much better than using a brush and warm water to wash it off. It was a very time consuming process and took me about two or three days to complete the whole of the boat. This is how the hole looks after the paint has been removed with the paint stripper and prior to the sanding stage.
I was able to remove all of the marks on the hole using sandpaper. I used a lower grade sandpaper for the deeper marks, but I was careful not to sand too much of the gel coat away. I did not want to reveal the glass fibre beneath the gel coat. This is how the hole looked after the main sanding stage. After this, I used higher grey sandpapers to gradually smooth down the hole, ready for the polishing stage. When I removed the transponder bracket, a lot of water drained out. If water gets inside the foam filled buoyancy chambers, it is not able to get back out. So when I removed the screw like this, it gave the chance for the water to escape. The next thing to do was fill the holes with epoxy. I cleaned out the holes with a drill bit and then to give more surface area for the epoxy to adhere to, I used a countersink drill bit to open out the holes. I sanded down the area around each hole and then used a damp cloth to wipe away all the dust. I bought a West System epoxy resin and hardener kit and mixed up a thick paste of epoxy resin. I used a syringe to apply the epoxy resin and a plastic spatula to smooth down the resin over the hole. I went around the whole of the boat and filled in all of the screw holes with resin. There were many more holes inside the boat where items had been removed and I wanted to fill all these holes in and start afresh when I fitted all the new electric equipment. Whilst the epoxy resin was drying, which took 24 to 48 hours, I continued with sanding the hull of the boat, using finer sandpaper each time, ready for the polishing stage. I bought some matching gel coat direct from Orkney. It's very easy to mix, you just apply a little bit of hardener to the gel coat and mix small batches as you go, as it sets quite quickly. You apply the gel coat with the spatula and make sure the gel coat is raised slightly from the rest of the boat so that you can sand it back down flush later.
Now I've applied a gel coat, I need to wait at least 24 hours before it will be hard enough to sand down. In the next video, I'll be showing you how I finish the hole, how I service outboard motors, and I'll be making a start on the 12 volt electrics. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.